So this is my um, KTM 690 adventure bike that I uh, rode around the world in 217 and I'll give you a quick look around then we'll go through some of the details on it. So probably the main thing you'll notice first up is it's pretty heavily modified. It's actually got a, uh, a rally kit from Kit 690 in Europe. They do the Husky 701 stuff as well. So um, now this is a 217 model. So the main things you're going to notice on it is that um, it's got a much larger um, fuel capacity. So the rear tank now has gone and this is the factory um off the 450 rally this is an 18 litre tank and the big difference on this over the 12 litre is just on on this side here um, where they'd normally have the exhaust cut out is that that's all gone because you're running a low exhaust so it goes up from 12 litres up to 18 in the back so that's pretty handy still got the fuel pump in the rear of it and then what you've got at the front is two seven and a half litre tanks now they run they're linked at the bottom and they run a second fuel pump which is just down here at the bottom of the left hand front tank gives you two fuel pumps on the bike which is pretty handy when you're doing the big miles that you've got the ability to um, run from either fuel tank and drain and run either fuel pump so you've actually got a little switch down here you can probably see just in here that is a tap that basically lets you turn off the back tank um, particularly important when you fill them up because the front tank's a lot higher, so if you fill the front to the the, the very top, then what will happen if you leave that tap open is it drains and runs out the rear overflow. So you only have to do it for about 40 or 50 k's while you drain some out the front. But um, it's pretty handy too that you can isolate both tanks. So we have a bit of a closer look. So you've obviously got the full their full factory KTM tanks on the bike, and then the factory KTM fairing up front, which is great, gives you some wind protection on the long trips so if you have a bit of a closer look at some of the details some of the things that i've modified here um basically got the might be a bit hard to see but got the rocks um bar risers and the scott damp and i really like having the bike set up so that when i'm standing it's super comfortable um so i'd i'd rather compromise a little bit of sitting down to have it so when you're standing you've got the nav tower that comes with the kit 690 and basically i've got the garmin zumo 595 up the top which was really great for doing all that the normal dash setup and then basically just in here you got the oxford grips because i'm getting a bit soft and i like a bit of hot <laughs> on a cold day and they were pretty handy and then the two switches basically the the first one there um with the silver you can see is the actual fuel pump switch the second one is just a backup switch so if anything ever happened i can just unplug the harness plug it on the other one and i've still got the ability to switch from front to rear on the on the tanks um, other modifications basically running the the Touratech you know folding mirrors they're pretty handy if you if you come off or whatever um, over on this side pretty straightforward just added in this is a KTM set reset switch which can run basically the functions on the dash so you can scroll through the different features reset the trip see what gear you're in all that sort of stuff without taking your hands off the bars which is pretty handy um, other modifications, the suspension's basically been revalved and reset up just for me um, and for the sort of load I was carrying going around the world. So that worked really well. Big difference, obviously, front and rear shock all done like that. You're running the MIV, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, pipe and rear muffler. Anyone from Europe can correct me on the correct pronunciation of it, but that's been really good. Um, and it runs just, as I say, like all the factory... 450 rally stuff runs a um, few other modifications some of them from rally raid i'll get down low have a look you can probably see in here you might see it better from this angle this is a um rally raid part it's a billet lower link they're normally a cast part now i've heard of a few of them cracking but it's really only guys that are riding them and um, particularly hard you know, normal adventure rider, even with a big load on it, is not a big deal. And um, the other modifications on a 690 really important is to upgrade. The rear tank is the subframe for anyone who knows the, the 690s. And these bolts up here are basically holding, you've got the, 
upper and lower bolts and um, they're holding that whole rear section so if you think about it, it's taking your weight and plus if you chuck a bunch of luggage and you're adding another six liters of fuel because it's a bigger tank it's carrying all that so rally raid do a um, upgrade kit for those which is much stronger much bigger and you're never going to break them so that that's a really good move if you're going to do any sort of serious riding on a 690 a um, couple of other things rally raid make that are really handy they make a different thermo switch which brings the fans in um, a lot cooler it just fits exactly like the the standard one nothing different the other thing which is behind the tank you won't see is that ktm run a uh, basically from the oil pressure up to an oil pressure switch they run it's a bit like a plastic line and um, rally raid make a nice braided one so there's no chance of that either breaking so um that gives you a sort of a bit i'll show you um uh, the other thing that's critical on a ktm is throw the factory seat away ktm why can't you make a decent seat this is um beautiful seat concept super comfy you know, I was on it for eight or nine months riding around the world. It's a suede cover, which I like from grip, but if you ride a lot in the wet, boy, they just hold the, the water and they can be soaking for days. So if you're in Europe or whatever, you might want to rethink the the idea of a cover that's made like that. If I pop it off, I'll show you some of the mods um, underneath. Okay, I'll show you a few of the bits. Pretty much all the back end of it is um, just standard KTM where we've got fuses and ECU and whatnot, but I've put the Rottweiler um, air filter system. The KTM one is enormous and it's pretty, in my mind, pretty inefficient. And I also run on top of that um, filter socks. They're a great idea. You know, I'll have four or five of them in a bag already pre-oiled and that. So when I'm riding, if it gets dirty and you've ridden for a day or two, you can just rip it off, change it, keeps the filter clean, does a great job. The really cool thing Rottweiler do, might be a bit hard to see, is this little bag here. And I'll just show you, because I use this for a whole bunch of stuff. So, you know, I've got a bag here that is um, full of, like, spare parts. There'll be a spare injector in there, spare bits and pieces, fuses and whatnot. Um, then I've got a bag here that's just the, the KTM. That one there is just KTM, sort of special tools, anything I need, you know, specific to work on the KTM. Then I've got my actual tool roll. Um, so, you know, that's pretty handy. You know, I think they're an aftermarket part. That gives you a whole bunch of, you know, different tools and bits and pieces you're going to need to work on anything. Then on top of that, you know, I carry spare um, brake and clutch levers in there, just in case you have a really big off. And also I've got, that's the brake and clutch levers, and also I run a, um, a power feed into there that I can run USB, I can charge stuff, do different stuff. So it's actually pretty big, makes it really handy on long trips to have somewhere to put your tools that's out of the way and neat and tidy. Now some of the other features on the kit 690 that comes with it you get obviously a really great um, sump guard down there, it's really great radiator guard, so all the basic stuff you're going to need, exhaust system etc to turn the bike into a really great adventure bike. Also one of the things that comes with is really great headlights, so which KTM are notorious for having pretty ordinary headlights, they're not really meant to ride at night try not to do much of that so in terms of um, gearing at the moment that's running pretty standard um, factory gearing it with a um, 1548 but when I went around the world I'd use a 1542 a lot nicer at that high speed when you're just cruising along and um, again locally I tend to use the these are a Pirelli Scorpion XC mid hard compound really good tire for the dirt but again going around the world I'd I probably tend to use the Continental TKC 80s. Good all-round tyre, pretty bulletproof. Um, you only get about 5,000 out the rear and about 10,000 out the front. That's the only downside, obviously, that you're in the middle of Siberia trying to find a new tyre for it can be a challenge. The bike's done just over 50,000 Ks. Basically, 45,000 of that was going around the world, as I say, about two years ago. And... Uh, I'm pretty fussy about maintenance, so every 5,000 it got oil and a good check over and then every 10,000 the proper service, brakes, pads, you know, tyres, whatever it needed at that point. At um, 25,000 I changed the rocker arms, which were a weak link on the older motor, um, this motor, because 
the new 690's got an updated motor which is smoother with a second balance shaft makes a bit more horsepower but they're a bit weak and they've upgraded them so I changed that at 25,000 it's done 50 now so I'll probably change that again just to be even though it's got the upgraded one just to be safe at 30,000 and um, did the timing chain was starting to get a bit noisy and then at 45,000 when we finished yeah put a, a new set of uh, clutch set in it which was to be honest still in really good condition did all the swing arm bearings wheel bearings pretty much everything you could do from a maintenance point of view and look it hadn't missed the beat you know it ran perfect all the way around the world i chose it over i've got a 1290 advent super adventure r and the 790 wasn't out at this stage when i chose but i went for it because it's light you know it's 143 kilos or something you add the kit goes up to about 160 kilos um, so when you look at all that it was a long way short of say an 1190 or a 1290 at that stage and it's still about 30 kilos lighter than the 790 although the 790 would be a great bike to consider um, but I was doing most of this on my own so I had to work on the fact that you know if I drop it I got to pick it up um, I'll show you a couple of pics of luggage set up but basically I ran hard panniers around the world which I don't actually prefer but from a safety point of view I had a lot of camera gear and a lot of stuff that I wanted to lock away so it didn't get stolen otherwise I used the Moscow Moto uh, 40 litre rear kit which is fantastic really good soft setup and it's great for you know I did a 12 day ride through the high country here in Australia and it was perfect for that so um, yeah much prefer soft but obviously sometimes you've got to be practical when you're traveling the world so hey I hope that helped give you a bit of an idea on um, what it goes into making a really great adventure bike out of the 690 it needs a fair bit of work but when you're done it's a pretty great bike to ride and i still love getting on it um so yeah i hope some more adventures ahead thanks for tuning in